Hey gang, we're still in Minneapolis. We did a video on Thomas Burnett, the 9-11 story. Thought while I was here, I'd check out this really old cemetery called Lakewood. Coming up here on the left. And I want to actually see the Pillsbury grave, Charles Pillsbury. So we're going to check him out. Looks like a beautiful cemetery here. And we are kind of in, but something's happening here. Somebody's trying to go the wrong way. Okay, now we're in. We are at the top of the hill now, just across from the lake, and there are just some magnificent sculptures here. Just unbelievable. Remarkable. I highly recommend coming here if you're in Minneapolis. It is very peaceful, serene. And there's a lot of a lot of sculptures to look at. This is the Pillsbury plot. And you can see it has probably the biggest monument in the whole cemetery. It is absolutely massive. And this is the one with the woman on top. take a look there are a lot of Pillsbury's here guys lots of Pillsbury's <laughs> holy cow well I did spot Charles right off the bat right here Yes, Charles A. Pillsbury, 1842 to 1899. He's here with his wife, Mary Ann, 1841. She was born a year before him, and she passed three years after in 1902. 
So Charles, I'm just going to give a brief overview. We're not going to get into the deep dive this time. But Charles came here to Minneapolis to make flour. Now he had learned and done, did his studies. He went to Europe, he went to Eastern Europe, and he learned the means and methods because that's where the best flour, the best grains, which were making the best flour were, that's where it came from. And he brought that back here and Minneapolis was a, a booming metropolis. There were other mills here but he set up and he said, well, we're going to be the best. Now, the first big thing he did is he employed a method of crushing the grains by using steel rollers. And everybody else was using this kind of caveman technique with the rocks, big stones. So he was an innovator. And with that, he was an entrepreneur. And with his uncle, he started actually with his uncle here. And he kind of took things over. He took the lead and with the entrepreneurial skill he built it into you know opening other mills increasing the quantities and he built it into an empire that we know today which ironically ends with the Pillsbury Doughboy now that's not a creation of Charles but I think it's General Mills that owns Pillsbury now it was interesting because Pillsbury bought the, he sold the company he stayed on the board throughout his life, but the company, I think it was in the 20s or 30s, they bought the company back, the family did, and then they sold it to General Mills eventually. It's what it is today. Now let's see, the children we've got, let's start here with first four kids. This is George A., son of Charles and Mary Ann. 1870 to 1870, so not sure how many months, if even a month, the baby, the baby lived. It would be interesting to find out what happened. If any of our genealogist friends, maybe Deborah or JT can figure it out. Margaret, this is again his wife, so we're gonna, oh no, Margaret. That is Margaret C., daughter of 1876 to 1881 so she only lived to be five years old or less or more and the two other kids we have Charles Stinson who lived I think to 1939 it looks like December 6 1878 to yeah May 21st, 1939. And then their other child was a boy. And he's over here. Yeah, John Sargent. Here he is. 1878 to 1968, 90 years old. So this is the longest surviving child. And then what you see here are Pillsbury's. And over there, more Pillsbury's. And over there, more Pillsbury's. So it's it's Pillsbury Hill here. And with that, overlooking the beautiful lake, we are going to, we're going to be leaving Minneapolis now. Oh, it was great bringing you guys along. Hope you liked it, and we'll see you on the next one. Be safe.